really we've learned that digging in dirt is healthy. So just throw this out, it, forget the shovel, use your, this is the way God made it. So we have, we have shovels built into our bodies y'all today mom and i are taking on some landscaping projects in the front and recapping our favorite outdoor spaces that we've toured in the past we're even sharing a little field trip we took to a flower farm this is going to be a fun one y'all if i have kept a plant alive it has been 100 percent luck until now i am partnering with planta thank you planta for sponsoring today's video these guys all over my house. I feel like they bring the house to life. And honestly, they feel like family. I mean, I've literally had this fiddly fig since before both my kids. So here's how I'm going to be intentional with my plant care this year with Anta. They have intelligent care schedules that takes into consideration water, light, temperature, distance from window, all the factors that you haven't studied the plants. You just want them to look beautiful at your home. So say I'm going to add a plant. I'm going to go ahead and scan it and it knew. Then I can share where it's at, which it's in the living room. I'll be joining 32 million plants that Planta takes care of. So in this video, I will be showing all the plants that I'm adding to my outdoor landscaping. Now I need to go around and add those, all the other indoor plant, Dr. Planta, where you can diagnose what's going on. So let's see what's wrong with her based on this leaf. It is overwatered, which is probably accurate. Sometimes you just try too hard. They also have community groups where you can get inspiration on propagating, plant setups, and styling. If you would like to download the Planta app, and start your plant lady journey with me. I'll have a link in description. Thank you, Planta, for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get going on all of our other plant outdoor inspiration. This is gonna be a fun video, y'all. It has only been one week since I've taken the Christmas decor down on the patio, which I showed you, I mean, I'm fully transparent. We showed you in the last tour that we did here. It was in progress. Honestly, the, this outdoor space, because we don't use it as much, is hard to keep up with, but we are going to give it a refresh today while we're sharing our favorite patio inspiration and all of our outdoor project plans for the spring and the summer. So lots of inspiration. But also and it, helpful tips. Helpful tips, and it's going to be kind of a progress report. So we'll do this, you'll see kind of where we're going, and then you'll see the end results. Because some of the plants that we're planting, I'm on a tight budget for this outdoor space. I have a lot of space. And if you're a chicken girl, she is sharing chicken-friendly plant tips. Because they ate everything <laughs> last year. This yeah. video is for you. So are you ready to do our first Let's thing? Let's do it. First thing, we're going to plant our hydrangeas, which I've killed every year. But this year is going to be dead for it. It's okay? Okay. So I had these exact hydrangeas. Was it the year before last? I think it's been a couple years. And they always come back but my lawn guy cut them all the way back, which hydrangeas bloom on second year stems. So really, if they are cut all the way back, you're not gonna get anything. Anyways, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna stagger and not, I'm not gonna take out what I killed, you know? Cause this one day, I have faith that this will one day be this and it'll be nice to have double, you know? So that's what we're gonna do in this situation. And while we do that, I'm gonna share. Well, I was trying to decide, should we should we do it like that? Or should we do one over there? Okay, let's stop. Okay, you dig one, I'll dig one. And we're gonna use this fertilizer because if you want blue blooms, which I want blue, then you want soil acidifier. And I learned that from um, the garden answers. So let's get to digging. Okay. I think I've hit bedrock. <laughs> I mean, really? So the inspiration that I want to talk about with the hydrangeas, can you guess? No. Somewhere oh. on the East Coast. No, Carla's garden. So we went to her Instagram is Lady Butterbug. You guys lost your marbles over that garden tour. I think it has 200,000 views so far. And 
because we had only done home tours, not outside, I was kind of shocked that it went so well. Are you gonna dig a hole? Yep. You're gonna be the hole digger? Yeah. <laughs> but she has great hydrangeas and the variety that she has, she has some that are in the shade, some that are in the sun. So I know that there's different kinds that thrive in different areas. These are the kind that are in the shade. She also did a great job of collecting things. Like she has an awesome shed and a greenhouse and honestly everything was thriving and everything is on irrigation. So that is one thing I'm gonna do this year is I'm gonna set irrigation up over here so that there's drip lines and these girls, their ladies, I'm gonna say the ladies, are going to thrive. One of the cool things about Carla is that she invites everyone into her garden. So she literally has a sign at the front entrance of her home in in the front by the sidewalk that says come in and enjoy the garden yeah yeah and one thing that i liked that i'm trying to do with all of these so i got a lot of plants from the greenhouse and our local garden center was i got perennials so in the past i've gotten things that die off carla has a ton of perennials which Honestly, I didn't even know the difference. I mean, clearly, annuals are only a year. Perennials come back every year. But it's like, if you're gonna invest all this time, why are we planting things that are just gonna die? Right. You know, we're really new to this whole um, homestead farming thing. I wouldn't say planting hydrangeas is a homestead task, but I do have chickens and ducks. <laughs> Well, I'm just talking about like we're learning about determinate and indeterminate vegetables. That we're doesn't have to do with this. <laughs> no, we're learning about gardening tips on how to get your chickens not to eat your yes. plants. Like there's just okay, a lot so that, to it. Okay, let's plant these real quick and then I'm gonna show you what I got that the chickens don't eat because last year that was the other thing. I did plant some perennials and I have, so I have a run, a 50 by 30 run. I mean, my run is ginormous as big as some people's backyards but a couple of the girls not all are naughty and they jump out and they have eaten i mean well there's one girl who loves to come in the house okay and she knocks on the front door she comes up here she knocks on the front door and when you ignore her she just lays eggs in the garden right here well we were clearing the leaves here before because i knew we were going to film this video so i had my husband mow and then clear the leaves here and we found a pile of eggs in the corner where she had been laying and that she would lay an egg and then she would knock on the door like hey there's an egg out here <laughs> but mom thought she was just wanting to get in but clearly she was communicating she laid an egg i think she really wanted in okay let's do these and then uh i'll share the plants next <music> Earthworms that means healthy soil. Okay, I think that's deep enough. Okay, so. <laughs> How do you like that? Is this a root ball? I want to kill it. Do you think that's a good one? I think I might be. Today we are doing a little fun tutorial about hanging baskets. No, and it can fun. be very expensive to do a hanging basket that's already done. Yeah. But if you buy them separately, um, you can combine them and really save a lot of money. So you did these. So I got these on Amazon for a kit. They were like $20 each at Home Depot. So I just decided to uh, get them on Amazon. And I think it was like $25 for four. So but do they come in different sizes? These are small, but they're good for what we want to do. Yeah, I think, I'm sure they do come in different sizes. It's just nice to have a lot. So we're going to do plants that the chickens probably would eat hanging high because they can't get them. So, well, some of the girls so are flying now. They, they don't fly, but they do jump high. They won't do it. That, it'll be good. We're these are, on. sorry, these are azaleas. Azaleas. Should we do the greenery? So we want 
it to be layered. We're, we're gonna do this and then we're gonna do the greenery in front. Okay. So, so we really need more dirt, I think, but I we guess. can pull the dirt from that pot. Okay, so we're layering these in. I actually did read the ivies. Chickens don't like to eat ivies, so that's why I got them, but then I decided this would be really cute to like layer in in front. But the other thing about these is ivies are kind of hard to kill. Like they flourish. So like I said, I we, I need a little more dirt to put mine up, but you get the picture. No, I'm gonna get some. Hold on. Get the picture here. I didn't, I wasn't trying to give a tutorial. I was trying to give inspiration. I am not the tutorial. I don't know what I'm doing. This is trial by fire, my friends. Yeah. And so I just want you to be encouraged to try something. You don't need to be an expert, but because I'm not an expert, I'm trying to do it as cost effectively as possible. So I'm getting smaller plants that are more affordable. I'm getting things that are on sale. I'm getting perennial. So I only had to do it once and I don't have to pay for my landscaping every single year. I'm doing it in phases. I was watching a video from Garden Answers and she said, she was like, I just had a revelation when I was watching a, an estate be put in, like a European, a, an estate in Europe. And she said, I realized how small the plants they were putting in and how it's gonna take years, if not more, to get all of that established. And you know, we're such an instant gratification. Like, you wanna watch this video and have all the answers. I'm not talking about you guys, you guys are wonderful. Well, you. you're talking about me because essentially I went to the flower store. I found the most beautiful flowers on the planet, brought them home. My friend and gardener who helps me with some things said, Michelle, these are gonna live until it gets hot. And then they're gonna die because these are made for shade. And I said, well, they were the prettiest and that's all I wanted. I wanted big, established, beautiful, pretty flowers. And getting like the but biggest- But it costs money when you do that if yeah, that's it not- either can, It either costs time or money. But even the big giant estates that have all the money are doing some things with time because sometimes they're just better, you know? You need more dirt. Steal some from that pot. But this is cute, don't you think? Yeah, it's really cute. Okay, let me go get a, a step stool. planters which I always like to do ferns which if you saw Carla's tour she has the craziest biggest ferns ever and the secret sauce to ferns I think is making sure that they're well watered so I'm actually not gonna plant them in the dirt I'm gonna keep them in these garden pots but these I'm going to water from the bottom so I just stick in a pot of water and then that's how I'm gonna water them but I also have I got these off of Amazon they're like these little hydration you just stick the water in there and then they slowly go out the terracotta so i'll do that as well just pop one of those in there water from the bottom and they're gonna thrive do you think you need a wreath yeah i need a wreath but i was going through all of our favorite home exterior inspiration to find what i love both look at this one Woo. I love the old barn, which I think that's her video has done so well. And I think it's because her curb appeal is just off so the neat. charts. Who else has a great exterior that you just love, love, love? We've done a ton. Well, Michelle Howe. Oh, Michelle. And Michelle uses perennials too. And her- She has a wildflower garden. Her cottage garden look is like my favorite, which is why I got these okay so mom was proud of me because i went to the garden center myself my baby's growing up i always <laughs> have her do it so when i went in i was actually just looking for things that chickens didn't kill with the goal of making a cottage garden but the deal with the cottage gardens is like if you want the look that michelle howell has this is eight dollars if you get the size of lavender that she has or you have one in your front yard 
It's literally like a hundred dollars. But lavender grows fast. It grows mm -hmm. fast. It grows very fast. So you fast. gotta start. And I was watching another garden answer video where she shows and she packs it in tight. I have so much space. That is so unsustainable. But I got the lavender. I got Cosmos, which they are annuals, but apparently they're like so easy to grow. I got sweet alyssum, which the chickens absolutely hate sweet alyssum. I think it has like an oniony taste or something. I don't know why it's called sweet, but apparently in some areas, sweet alyssum can be invasive. I kind of want an invasive look though. I want it to fill in, you know? And then this is salvia, which chickens also hate. Also kind of oniony. Anything onion, mint, whatever, but this grows kind of wild. And Michelle has this in her yard too. And then cat mint, which I saw Garden Answer use this and yeah, like it. I don't know. I don't know. But it's very pretty. So this will have like the purple flowers. My neighbor. This will have yellow flowers. This will have purple flowers. This has white. So I was trying to not like be too color scheming. Marigolds. I don't know where I'm putting, but chickens hate marigolds. <laughs> I just bought everything chickens hate. <laughs> but these are very popular, even if you don't have chickens. This is like, oh, there's a baby boy. Smell, smell the flowers. Does it smell good? <laughs> Does it smell good? <laughs> okay, don't chickens eat begonias? Yes, they love begonias, but I was gonna put them in the little pot over by the chair. Okay. So let's lay these out. Before, actually, before we lay these out, I wanted to talk about one of my plans is to refresh the furniture here. So for Christmas, I had the sled and a blanket ladder and mom draped these really cute bells. It was a vibe. I loved it. And I have some chairs. I made some mood boards for this space. So I'm gonna slowly collect because I was finding furniture that was really, really expensive. Yeah, so and let me like, tell you something. My son-in-law, Andrew, loves a porch swing. I mean, yeah. every time we go on vacation, if we go to camping, if we go to the beach, it doesn't matter. I look specifically for a home with a porch swing. So I made the mood boards with the porch swing, yes. and I am actually, a lot of people have been asking for a, like, how to make mood boards. So if you sign up in the email, I'm going to do a tutorial. I'm going to do a tutorial. I don't love the she word said. tutorials, but I do feel like that would be helpful because this is a long game for me. This patio, getting it established and doing, whether it's landscaping or furniture, it's a long game. So I made my mood board so that I can pursue that over time. I would love it to be this spring and summer. Oh, wow. <laughs> I would love for it to be the spring or summer. I don't know, we shall see. But either way, let's talk about uh, swing inspiration. Wow, you could just like look at swings forever. No, because... from our home tours though. Oh, okay. So mom's port swing is a freaking dream. It's a dream. I had it built because I went and looked online and they were thousands of dollars for a bed porch swing. So I had my carpenter build it for me. It wasn't obscenely expensive, but I asked, one of the pro tips is I asked for him to get the large rope like you see in the magazines. The problem with the large rope, my friends, is if it's real rope and not nylon, it stretches. So every once in a while, we have to pull the porch swing up a little bit or it will yeah, be on the ground. Who else has a porch swing? Didn't Jessica from the old barn had one? I think Shannon had a porch swing at her old house. Yeah, Shannon has a great French front porch, period. Like, you know what we ought to do? We really ought to call her and say, hey, Shannon, can you get your porch ready? We're on our way over. Y'all, she, she would was. probably like do it. Yeah, her porch was so good. And it really, I think the back porches were always yes. dreamy. Uh, Stephanie's back porch. Oh my gosh. Shannon's her? new back porch. Oh, Wowzer. Yeah. Oh yeah. But we only have Christmas footage of Shannon's. We need to do a new spring home. tour yes. with her or summer. Yes. But Stephanie's with the screen. Oh yeah. So dreamy. And that and then Michelle Howells, hers has gra glass garage doors. Dreamy. 
Okay, so let's lay these plans out and then I want to talk about my back patio plans while we're doing. Okay, so we were just talking about back patios, which clearly were working in the front, but all good things take time, like we said. And so while we're planting these, I'm going to talk about my back patio plans. Okay. Okay, so I last year did a lot. I had this crazy ugly shed in the back, which I had such vision for it. The first day I saw it, I knew it's going to be so dreamy, but it took a lot of time because I DIY'd the whole thing. I got the fence from our friend Erica at the Bingham Estates. We did a tour of her. She did a flip house but it was a luxury flip house. And then after she finished that in McKinney, she moved on to the Bingham Estates, which we need to go. It's so good, but she tore down the fence. They had so much fencing in the back. And so my husband and I tore down, or we demoed for her. So in trade for demo, we got this beautiful fence that looks so like, cottagey and she's actually building little guest cottages oh, so we've so kind of been waiting until maybe she I got it further down the road but we may go do a tour just to show you in progress no i think she's almost done oh wow! i will text her and pop up her response but she, it's so good and i think that what i love about that similar to the cabin project we're taking on is you can actually go stay there so if you guys wanted to do a girls day or a little, you know, get away with your husband or whatever. Yeah, let's pop up some of the fun things that people have been doing over there. People have been having bridal showers oh, and yeah. teas. So and like, but you could stay there too, like have a, a little staycation if you're in Dallas or if you wanna, cause people were messaging us from the, when we went to Antiques and Vintage, and like, dang, I wish I could go. We have nothing like that around me. And I'm like, well, just book a, you know, book the Bingham and then go shopping. You know, we do have great shopping around here. Hey, can I talk about the fact that um, two things? One, I'm truly not a gardener or I would have knee pads. And, I know. And I'm getting, look at me. This and is two, two, really, we've learned that digging in dirt is healthy. So <laughs> just throw this out. It, forget the shovel. Use your, this is the way God made it. So we have we have shovels built into our bodies, y'all. <laughs> Do y'all remember at the beginning of this video when I told you you're gonna get garden inspiration plus entertainment from mom? So what I do know is you like to keep, you, you break up the root ball a tiny bit, but you also like to keep your uh, flowers up a little bit, you know? Yeah. Okay, so I wanna talk about my back patio though. My uh, shed was a big deal last year. And a lot of people hated on my, uh, it being so bougie for chickens, but you know what? The Pinterest people love it. They have been asking, how did I do it? How's it holding up? The floors are honestly not holding up great because I think because I didn't seal it good enough. So I would recommend if you're gonna do the Harlequin floors like I did, you definitely need to seal them. Another question I've got a lot is how is the brick holding up since we've painted it? It's holding up great, and on the siding, it's held up great too. So I think using the Wagner sprayer honestly makes it to where the paint, I think it it stayed on better than when we hand painted things because it like, it's going on so smooth and evenly. So I think if you are gonna do an exterior, I would definitely get a tool to number one, make the project easier, but number two, make it hold up. And we use, I can't remember the paint we used, but it was like the most uh, common brick paint at Home Depot. So we didn't use any special paint or anything. So I do have another Wagner project. I bought my kids a playhouse last year, or for Christmas, or actually their grandparents, not these grandparents, the other grandparents got them a playhouse. The good grandparents. Not the good grandparents. I said the other grandparents. Well, but you do got great in-laws. They do oh, so I got much wonderful things for the great children. Great in-laws. So, and that's rare. It is rare. People always complain about their in-laws. I don't relate to that. I have great in-laws. <laughs> but the, um, you're getting after I thought you were a hand well, digger. Unless you're. No, no, no. So, so the, uh, 
I want to give, I want to give the playhouse a makeover. And I want to, I want to paint it with the spray gun. I want to change out the awning to make it like a black stripe. And I want to landscape around it and do like cottage plants like this. So that's my big outdoor project for the year. I mean, in a dream world, I think so. In a dream world, I would also be able to build a sunroom off my back patio, like Jessica. And a second story, you always say that. And a second story, but I think this year it's just the playground. And I have lots of inspiration for that. Like, wow, the sweet alyssums were a big deal. Oh, yeah. Okay, where do these guys go? Right here. I think right in that hole, don't you think? Or is that not in a good spot? Yeah, no, it's good. It's like a pre dug hole. The other thing, one, another reason why I want to like establish this is because I want to be able to bring some of this stuff in and cut it and like, like the McGaffey Farms the, yes. from the last tour we did, um, the, the, the work, they call it the Dallas House, the Maven Design Team, and they had flowers from a local flower farm that we're going to try to go to next week. And yeah, we'll show you if we do. Yeah. We did end up going out to McGaffey Farms, and oh my goodness, guys, this is absolutely incredible. She farms these flowers, of course, to sell and share with friends, but you can also rent this space if you have an event and or just a gathering that you would like to have here, and how incredible to have great memories in this space. She is a mom, she is an entrepreneur, and I am just so incredibly impressed. And so now here I am, I'm gonna try to make my little landscaping a little bit more of a wonderland now that I've experienced that. Okay, I wanna talk about raised beds. So, you know, the that's one thing I worked on establishing last year. And like I said, the chickens ate everything. And I came up with some solutions, like I have installed motion sensor sprinklers back there and some bird netting and stuff like that. My dad has the most glorious raised beds ever and a green thumb like no other. But we have been seeing the most, I mean, it's like taking over the internet. Like everyone has. Yeah, and we love our raised beds. Um, we, from we get them from Vago Garden. And we and they just came out with a new one that's like kind of more cottagey vibe. You can get every shape, size, color, and they really do last. Well, like that's the, the, the paint is, yeah. um, however they powder coat it, it is solid. I know like the utility of growing your own food, but it makes you want to stay out there and hang out in the yard and enjoy your time in the sun, get the vitamin D. So I wanna know, are you growing, do you have a garden like that? Do you have, I have, honestly, like when I scroll on Instagram, there's this one girl, she has her raised bed gardens and she has the playground for the kids. And she even has one of those poles made out of a, a giant. Uh, it's a stock tank pole and it's heated. I'm like, no. That's the life I want to live. It's like elevated country bumpkin, you know? Like where you're like. Elevated country bumpkin. <laughs> Is this a new? It's my new. Style? Style. Elevated country bumpkin, you know? We can't all be bougie like me. No, I do. I really do appreciate, you know, like we were in Round Top last week and, you know, there's definitely some high end people were spending the big bucks on stuff and I can appreciate it. Yeah. But I also just like, okay, we just turned a stock tank into a pool, you know, you know like Round Top, everyone has such beautiful flowers and plants. Oh my gosh. They were all alive. All living plants everywhere. So these are Cosmos, so a lot of people, these are cut flowers, so I would love to be able to bring in arrangements. Are they supposed to be this close? We didn't read. I don't know. And you know what? That was one of the things that... How far apart? 12 inches apart, so <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We're going cottage. That was what Garden Answer, that was her, one of her tips was don't follow the rules on the tax. Just do it. Just okay. plan so somewhere you want to. I love that because I never like to follow rules. So when yeah. someone gives me permission to break the rules, 
Oh, no. Next on our channel, you will find our round top trip where we share all of our amazing finds for our cabin project. Then we have a home tour. We know you guys love the home tours. If you would like to see our home tour playlist, we will have it linked here on the thumbnails. We love you guys.